I've been asked by some of my subscribers to respond to Liana Kay's recent rant to anti-feminists because I'm an anti-feminist. So I watched it. There's 15 minutes and 12 seconds of my life I'll never get back. And Liana, I'm fully aware that you may never see my response because you blocked me and the rest of the Honey Badger Brigade during the Calgary Expo fiasco to avoid having to see our evidence against the obvious bullshit you were spreading about our group. And I'm fully aware that even if you do see it, you will probably use I don't talk to honey badgers to get out of addressing my points. Let me just say right out of the shoot, that will be evidence that I'm right and you're not trying to reach out to anyone or to be rational, but instead protecting your narrative from anti-feminists. I'm still going to respond to your rant. First thing to understand, Liana, just because creative gish galloping has gotten Lacey Green and MTV spot doesn't mean it'll validate your rebarbative whining. You pack a huge number of unfounded, unsupported statements together in that 15-minute rant. It's going to take me far more than that to respond to all of it, because although your rant was a bit repetitive, there are several individual things which must be addressed. Because of that, my response will take the form of a short series of videos, each of which will address part of your rant, beginning with your introduction, as even that was bullshit prefacing everything with the claim to only be targeting intellectuals and associating that demographic with, quote, people I can reach is an attempt to paint everyone who disagrees with you as unintellectual, ignorant, and closed-minded without ever having to address anything we have to say. Labeling criticism of feminism virtue signaling and presenting it as a contrast to, quote, doing the right thing and being effective is an unfounded moral judgment which ignores the facts about feminist opposition to legal reform initiatives during the last few decades. That preface is pure damage control. It indicates knowing you're about to spout some bullshit that is going to be recognized for the bullshit that it is and criticized. It's a way of pre-denying any counters to the rest of the assertions in your video without having to use any rational, evidence-based arguments to do so because you know you don't have any. It's also straight out of the Man Boobs slash David Futrell school of debate. Janet Bloomfield referred to these tactics in an article, which I'll link in the low bar, as preemptive strike, defined as opening an article, or in your case, the rant, with a forceful statement about what the correct view is, and framing the debate, described as creating two alternatives rather than discussing what the actual alternatives are. Framing the debate is, of course, false dilemma fallacy. So after your self-aggrandizing buildup, you begin constructing an enormous straw man, starting with the inference that all anti-feminists do, is quote Dworkin. You said... For some reason, many anti-feminists think it's perfectly rational to define the entirety of the modern women's movement by the actions and philosophies of its most radical non-scientific exceptions, whether by willful ignorance or being blinded by hate and fear themselves, anti-feminists miss the point entirely. There are a number of problems with this statement, not the least of which is the fact that you are, by inference, defining all women's activism as feminism. Let's get one thing straight. Feminists do not own women. You do not own the concept of women's activism. You never have, and you never will. Activism by women who do not identify as feminists does not become feminism by virtue of being done by women, nor does activism on women's behalf become feminist activism by virtue of being done for women. Feminism is not the arbiter of women's rights or women's issues. It's just a political outlook upon which a lot of claims are based. No matter how much you try to claim ownership, it will never entitle you to speak for all of us. The second problem, one you exhibit repeatedly throughout your rant, is framing all criticism of feminism as if all we ever talk about is Andrea Dworkin. At best, this shows a lack of research into anti-feminist assertions and arguments, if you're willing to look at it, there is a wealth of anti-feminist writing online criticizing the actions of a wide variety of self-identified and movement-identified feminists, ranging from suffragette bigotry and gynocentrism through the modern movement's establishment media and lobbyists. The vast majority of it makes little mention of Dworkin or other radfems, though that does not make them a taboo topic either. They're not exempt from criticism just because their behavior and their influence on the mainstream movement embarrasses you. 
The third problem is that this is yet another use of the preemptive strike slash framing the debate combo with which you attempt to deflect feminist responsibility for feminism's history by framing all embarrassing feminists as radical and then treating discussion of said history as an act of ignorance and hate. That deflection, another David Futrell classic, is used by many third-wave and postmodern feminists to try to deny that feminism has been behind any bad thing any feminist has ever done. I think it deserves a label. I like e pluribus dindu, or out of many, a valid-sounding excuse. Nice feminists seem to think that pushing the movement's roots and establishment aside, denying their influence, and ignoring the impact of their actions on society will allow the stated intentions of the coffee shop segment they paint as the mainstream to somehow overshadow them. Unfortunately, this pretty much eliminates the validity of nice feminists' claim that feminism is responsible for things like women's voting rights, equal pay, and the elimination of gender role-based legal and social restrictions on women, because the feminists responsible for those achievements are the same ones with that embarrassing, bigoted history of lobbying for anti-male discrimination in law and policy. I've written about this, but rather than go over the whole point in this video, I think I'll just link to the article, in the low bar of course, under the title, Feminists Don't Understand Cake. If nice feminists aren't represented by feminism's establishment, why are they not demanding that feminist organizations like the National Organization for Women stop claiming to represent them? Or better, that they stop opposing initiatives aimed at reforming law and government policy which currently discriminates against men. After all, if feminism is about equality, you certainly don't want those organizations fighting against equal treatment under law and policy in your name, do you? Next, you say, by treating the nutbags like real feminists, they're helping them implement their radical agenda, and accuse us of helping to shout down opposition from non-radicalized feminists. Again, there are several problems with this. First, it's a version of the no true Scotsman fallacy. No true feminist relies on labeling any feminist that gets criticized, including self-identifying feminists and even some of the movement's founding mothers, radical or not a feminist, in order to avoid admitting that their actions are representative of the feminist movement. Again, e pluribus dindu. I call bullshit. Second, it's a Darvo attack. DARVO being an acronym for Deny, Accuse, Reverse, Victim, and Offender, a concept that is described on a shrinkformen.com. Links again in the low bar. This type of attack is a means of thought and criticism termination that relies on projecting criticism back at the critic. The DARVO attacking feminists use this to get out of addressing criticism of anything to do with feminism by putting their critics on the defensive. Third, it relies on the assumption that being criticized keeps feminists from engaging in activism, and is essentially a claim that feminist behavior is controlled by anyone but themselves, which sounds pretty weak to me. I mean, you can't close Twitter or YouTube long enough to write to established feminist organizations or your federal representatives, or maybe even just sign a petition. Are, are you really that helpless? Regardless, this is actually funny because the argument gets used by feminists who actively oppose non-feminist men's issues activists and then complain that we never get anything done. We do, and again, there will be some links in the low bar, but that's beside the point. If just being criticized on Twitter or YouTube can cripple the entire nice end of the feminist movement, what right do you guys have to complain about a perceived lack of achievement by a movement against which feminists actively lobby? How many of you self-titled real feminists have contacted the National Organization for Women and other establishment feminist lobbying groups to castigate them for striving to block equally shared parenting bills? Or how many of you have asked them to stop pushing for infringement on due process rights? You see, Liana, no. Our big issue is not really just with radical and third-wave feminism. For most of us, the issue is many-faceted, and while radical feminism and the third wave deserve the criticism they get, they're the least of our worries right now because there's another sneakier group of feminists who needs to be addressed first. I've mentioned that we take issue with establishment groups like NOW lobbying for anti-male discriminatory law and policy. That is the reason many women like me become anti-feminists, 
We oppose treating human rights as a zero-sum game divided by gender. If a law is needed to protect a human right, criminalizing violation of that shouldn't depend on the sex of the violator or the victim. Period. End of story. Until activists who lobby Western government in feminism's name while claiming to act on women's behalf can live up to that standard, women like me will always be anti-feminist. Most of us also take issue with apologists like you providing cover for those lobbying groups by deflecting to radfems and resorting to fallacious logic when we bring them up. Rather than take the initiative to actively oppose them, you castigate their critics for pointing out that what they're doing is wrong, thereby making yourselves into shields protecting their lobby. Want a really good argument against anti-feminist Liana? Build one! Quit dicking around on YouTube and start an anti-establishment lobby to counter groups like now whose influence on legislators is currently blocking efforts at legal reform. Many of us also take issue with feminism's victim narrative. You say truly mainstream feminists are working with girls to build their self-esteem. Well, how? By blaming traditional female socialization when women refuse to be accountable for themselves? By substituting a victim narrative for any real effort to encourage women and girls to strive to better themselves in their circumstances? You say we may not like the way individual activists and educators do these things. Well, no shit we don't. Not when you're lying to women all over the world about the scope, prevalence, and demographics of intimate partner and sexual violence to create a false panic and demonize men. Not when there are, again, establishment feminists actually exploiting that narrative for money while actively preventing male victims of female perpetrators from receiving any help. Not when these groups are taking Western feminism's hateful rhetoric to foreign countries where they're teaching women and girls that their fathers, their brothers, their husbands, and their sons are their enemies. Not when your movement is doing the same thing in foreign countries as it does in the West, using a gynocentric focus to exclude men in crisis from assistance initiatives. And again, there will be a link in the low bar for that. Many of us are horrified at the worldwide expansion of feminism's greedy grievance industry, and we reject feminists' assertions that they represent women as a group. You do not represent us. We represent ourselves You represent yourselves. So no, we can't agree that these things are all good. Even if you slap nice-sounding labels on them and try to use that to rehabilitate international feminism's reputation by rebranding it. You claim we rarely hear about these activities in the press. This is debunked by simple Google searches, which I've also linked in the low bar. Two of them. One to a live Google search, and one to an archive of a Google search I did the day that I first heard your rant. And uh, both of them show that it is heavily reported that feminists are active in foreign countries. And it seems to me that there's quite a bit of uh, news media approval of feminist activities in foreign countries. So, once again, just a simple Google search. It only would have taken you a few seconds to find out that wasn't true. And uh, with that, I'm going to end this video... In the next video, I'll pick up where I left off, starting with your complaint about anti-feminist criticism of feminism's rape culture narrative.